Before any device can be calibrated, it first has to exist inside a compass as a DUT definition. Here we're going to calibrate a pair of the Ashcroft K17 pressure sensors. In compass, these are stored under DUT. We can access the DUT definition from the setup menu or directly from the toolbar. When defining a DUT definition, there's, there's a consideration of whether you have a unique one-of-a-kind device or if you have multiples that are very similar. In this situation, we have two of these, and we could create two unique DUT definitions, or we could save a little bit of space in the database and create a generic profile that describes both of the sensors. And for this situation, the profile work would seem to be preferred because both the sensors are the same model, they have the same range, and the same type of output. So to keep things simple, we're going to create a record type called a profile. If you have a, a, a new database, you'll have to create a new entry. So we go over to the, the new paper icon, click that, and that'll create a blank entry, which we can then populate. Uh, for this video, I'm going to delete this and walk us through the existing Ashcroft setup. So just like with a support device editor, the form is common. We have control buttons on the right-hand side, a scroll bar in the top, and we have tabs across the upper middle, header, calibration, communications, output, and comment. We'll start with the header tab, and we'll give it a record label. This is just a text field. Put anything in here that helps you identify this as being the uh, Ashcroft in a model K17, or perhaps you want to describe it by an asset number. The DUT type is simple, and the difference between a simple and advanced simply has to do with the number of outputs. A device that has a single output, a single pressure output, qualifies as a simple device. But if you have a pressure sensor that not only outputs a pressure, but maybe it outputs a secondary temperature value or maybe even a second range. Well, those are all additional outputs, and that would qualify then as an advanced DUT, greater than one output. The record type is profile versus individual. The profile with range can be useful in certain situations, but more times than not, we use the profile option. We give it a manufacturer name, type it in, type in the model, K17. Now this is a simplified version of, of the model nomenclature, and I, this is on purpose so that I can include a wider range of these types of sensors. What you'll notice is that the fields for the unique identifiers, the serial number, the identification, the customer ID, these are grayed out. Information for these fields will be prompted when the actual calibration is initialized. On the next tab, calibration, the information provided here is optional. You do not need to have entries to have a valid setup. We can uh, look at the cal calibration date. Uh, to change years, click on the year and you get the scroll bar. So today, let's go to today's date, February 4th, and I'll just put a one-year cal on this, make it due next year. Now the default test field. This is optional, and for a new setup, you probably won't have any test definitions to assign, but the concept here is if you have a test definition, a procedure if you want to think of it that way, then you can assign that test definition to be the default test that is run when this device is calibrated. You can always override that selection, but this is one way to simplify further selections during the initialization process. On the communications tab, we have to tell Compass how it's going to acquire the data. Now this falls into a unique situation where the output of the sensor is 4 to 20 milliamps. It's an analog electrical signal. And Compass 
can't handle an analog electrical signal. It has to be converted into a digitized value. So we have to run the output of the Ashcroft through a secondary device or some other device that will read the 4 to 20 milliamps and convert that into a dig digital signal which then gets fed into Compass. So our selection is other device and we're going to be using a digital multimeter as the other device. You can see from the drop down menu that I can choose these other interfaces but the only one that makes sense for for our, our job is we're going to communicate th via a other device. Now we go to the output. The output tab is pretty important. This describes the relationship between the raw signal and the final signal and in this case there's a very clear distinction where the raw output is, is not a pressure value but it's a analog signal. It's current. It's milliamps. Minimum pressure is defined by 4 milliamps. Full scale pressure is defined as 20. And I set the resolution that is appropriate for the resolution on the meter, which is also driven by the tolerance of the gauge. This is the raw output. Some could refer to this as the native output. But since we're doing a pressure calibration, we're going to be applying a pressure from a standard and comparing that to the output of the DUT. So we have to compare pressure to pressure. Therefore, the final output of the sensor must be scaled to an equivalent pressure value. So in this case, we use units of PSI or KPA or bar. It's your choice. But zero pressure is equivalent to 4 milliamps. Full scale pressure is 30 psi, and that's equivalent to 20 milliamps. So Compass sets up this linear scaling. Now the resolution of the sensor, this is important. What we set here is the resolution that will be recorded to the data file. The tolerance of the sensor is pretty low. It's plus or minus 1% of span. Some people will choose percent of full scale, and that's fine. Uh, just be careful that you understand the difference between full scale versus span. If you're unsure, the safer route to go is percent of span. That's the difference from maximum pressure to minimum pressure. And going back to the DUT pressure final output, this is a final output label. Again, this is a text field. It's like the record label, but it's specific to the pressure output of the sensor. The measurement mode Make sure that you choose that, and our selections on this screen are complete. The last tab is called Comet. Again, this is similar to Comet. In fact, it's not similar. It is the same thing as Comet on the Support Device tab, where it's, it's notes provided to the operator to help him understand and help him better be positioned for success in this calibration. In this situation, it's been known that the manufacturer specifies excitation voltage of 10 to 24 volts. But what's been observed is if pressure, sorry, if the excitation voltage is less than 13, then it has an adverse effect on the output of the sensor. So this note is for the operator to have the excitation voltage from our power supply be at least 13 volts. And when our entries are complete, then we can go over to the save. And now our DUT definition is complete.